great. Okay, so I looked at the um, problems that you sent me and I think starting on number 110 is a good spot. Um, so that's chapter three. So let me know when you have that in front of you. Okay, I have it. Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing we have to do is balance this equation, which we got a lot of practice with last time. So let's see, there'll be like a good refresher. That's step one. So they gave us the equation at least, which is kind of nice, um, but they did say it was unbalanced. So we will need to balance it before we can do anything else. So what should we do? Um, do we switch the things, like the second part? Oh yeah, they already did it for us. So then, um, yeah, they did that part. Now we just have to balance it. Do we count how many of each there are? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so how about K? How many are there? One. Okay. And then that's a Cl, like chlorine. How many are there? One. Oxygen. Three. Phosphorus. Four. Um, there's one, okay. Yes. Um, one Cl. Mm -hmm. Ten oxygen. Mm -hmm. And four P. Okay, so what should we do? Uh, balance the oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, multiply the first one by 10 and the other one by 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, then how do you do it? What do you do? Uh, count what it changed. Okay, so where do we put the 10? On the first side in front of the K. Perfect, okay. So what did it change? And the, there's now 10 Ks. And um, is there 30? Yeah, there's 30 oxygen and then one, 10 Cl. Mm-hmm. All right, and then on the right-hand side, um, what do we do? The 10 goes in front of the P. What do we, wait, what do we put in front of the P? The three, three. Okay. And then now there's um, 12 P's. Okay. And uh, that's all the changes on that side. Okay. And now we have to balance all the other things. Mm -hmm. So we could put a 10 in front of the K. On the right. All right, and that would fix. Okay. Yeah. And that would fix that. Okay. And then um, we have to fix the P's now. Mm hmm. So we can put a three in front of the left one. Perfect. You're a pro at this now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's step one. You always want to make sure it's balanced. Um, and now it says that the reaction between potassium chlorate red phosphorus takes place when you strike a match on a matchbox. If you were to react 
52.9 grams of potassium chlorate, so that's KClO3, with excess red phosphorus, what mass of tetraphosphorus dexaoxide, that's a mouthful, P4O10, <laughs> could be produced? Okay, so when we're doing stoichiometry, we're going to do what is called the train tracks. Have you seen this before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so whatever units are on the top, we want to get rid of them, so we're going to put them on the bottom. So G grams of KClO3 is going to go on bottom. That way, you know, like with fractions, when you have something on top and something on bottom, it crosses off. Okay, yeah. And we always want to get things out of grams and change it into moles. So instead of grams of KClO3, we're going to do moles of KClO3. Okay. Now the way to figure out how many grams are in one mole of KClO3 is by looking at the periodic table. So you've got to add up all those letters and see what you get. It's too small, I can't see it. Okay. So you're going to add up all those grams and then tell me what you get. Um, I got 122.55. Perfect. 122.55. Okay, so now we changed it from grams to moles, which is great, um, but we don't actually want KClO3. They were asking about um, the mouthful of P4O10. So instead of moles of KClO3, which is going to go on bottom to get rid of it, we're going to do moles of our P40, sorry, O10. Okay, so again, the way to decide what goes on bottom is you want it to be able to cross off with, with what was on top. Okay. And then we're trying to change into the substance that they asked us for, which is P4O10. And the only way to change from one substance to another is to go through moles. So they both have to be moles. You can't go grams to grams. You have to change it into moles and then go mole to mole. And the way you figure out these numbers is from the balanced equation, which is why it was important for us to balance it. All you do is you look at the numbers in the balanced equation, those brown numbers, and whatever is in front of that substance is the number you put. So what is in front of KClO3? Um, 10. Mm -hmm. And what is in front of P4O10? Uh, 3. Perfect. Oh. Okay, and then it says, I'm kind of running out of room, but if we had a longer piece of paper and it kept going. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I think this is just the last step, so I don't need that much of a line left, but just like that much. Okay, so what units should we put on bottom? 
the mall P4 um, 10. Perfect. And what they're really asking us for is what mass. So what units are mass in? Grams. Yeah. So instead of moles, we actually want grams of P4 O 10. So we're going to follow our units. We're making sure, okay, what's on top got crossed out with what's on bottom. And how do we know how many grams are in one mole of our P4O10? What do we do? Well, add up the masses from the periodic table. Perfect. What did you get? 283.88. Perfect. Okay. And what we do now to then calculate is we are going to multiply everything on the top and also we are going to multiply everything on the bottom and we will write our new numbers here. So what do you get when you multiply every all the numbers on the top? Um. It's a big number. Yeah. Uh, for 45,051.756. Perfect. And what do you get when you multiply all the numbers on the bottom? Uh, 1,225.5. Perfect. And so after that, we then just divide. What do you get? Um, 36.76. Perfect. And to know what units to put here, it's always going to be the units that we were left over with right here on the top because everything else got crossed off. So the units that we put in our answer is going to be grams of P4010. Okay. Okay, so your step one always is to balance that equation. That's why it was so important last time that we got good practice on that. Um, and then your next step is to start with whatever number they gave you and get it out of grams and change it into moles, okay, by using the periodic table. And then go from moles of your substance to moles of the new substance that they want by using those numbers from our balanced equation and then change it from the moles of that substance back into the mass or grams of that substance. You multiply all the way across on the top, all the way across on the bottom, divide, and then write your units. Okay. Okay, let's try another one. Like the one below it, let's try 111. So, it says, the reusable booster rockets of the U.S. Space Shuttle employ a mixture of aluminum and ammonium perchlorate for fuel. A possible equation for this reaction is, so they were super nice and they actually balanced it for us. 
Okay. Which is nice, so we don't have to do that step at least. What mass of NH4ClO4, NH4ClO4, okay, should be used in the fuel mixture for every kilogram of aluminum? So what they're saying is you're starting with one kilogram of aluminum. What unit should go on bottom? Mm -hmm. K and G. Yeah. Perfect. Now, before we can go to moles, we have to change it from kilograms of aluminum to grams of aluminum. What's that conversion? How many grams are in a kilogram? Mm -hmm. Is it three decimal places? Yes, it's three decimal places. So what we're saying is there's a thousand grams make up one kilogram. Yeah. Of any substance. So we're going to cross off our units. Now we're in grams of aluminum. What should we do next? Um, turn it to moles. Okay, how? What do we do? Uh, we need to find the mass in grams from the PI table. Okay, what units go on bottom? Grams okay. of aluminum. Perfect, and what units go on top? Uh, one mole of aluminum. Perfect. Okay. And then we've got to figure out grams of aluminum. So tell me what you get there. Is it just 26.98? Mm -hmm. All right. And then, of course, we have to remember to cross off our units, follow our units. Now we're in moles of aluminum. Okay. What should we do next? Um. Use the balance equation. Okay. What unit should we put on bottom? Uh, moles. Of? Aluminum. And what unit should we put on top? Uh, moles of the, <laughs> is it the NH or CLO? of NH4ClO4. Good. Okay. And what numbers do we put in front of each of those? Uh, we put a three on the bottom one. Okay. And uh, that's three on the top. Perfect. Okay, and again, we're going to cross off those moles of aluminum now. We are in moles of NH4ClO4, and they want to know what mass should be used. So what should we do? Put it back in grams. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Uh... Find the gram mass from the periodic table of the NH4 CLO. Mm -hmm. what, what units go on bottom? Uh, mole of NH4 
4 And what units go on top? Uh, Grant. Okay. What number goes on bottom? Is it just one? Mm hmm And then tell me what you get for what goes on top. Is it 117? Mm -hmm. Whoops, I just wrote that wrong. 117. I got 0. 0.45. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. And then remember, we've got to cross off those units. And what is the next step? we should take. Uh, multiply everything on the top and then everything on the bottom. Good. Um. Okay, let's see. What do you get on the top? Uh, 352,350. Oh, what did I do wrong? Sorry, hold on. I didn't punch in enough zeros, I think. Yeah, so three, five, Two, three, five, zero. Okay, and what do you get on bottom? Uh, I got 80.94. Perfect. And so what do you get for your answer? Uh, 4,000. 353.2. And what are your units? Uh, grams of NH4, CLO4. Perfect. One thing I want to go back to, does your teacher care about significant figures, big figs? Uh, sometimes. But on this test, I don't think so. Okay. Because, um, like, for example, on the first problem, how many sig figs were in that given number right here? How many sig figs are right here? Three. And so how many sig figs should we report our answer to? Three. Okay. So what would our real answer be if we were using sig figs? Uh, 36.8. Yeah. Okay, and then how about, this one is interesting because, let me see, they just said for every kilogram, so they didn't even give us really any sig figs at all. So this one might be kind of tough to report your sig figs. I mean, technically, I guess if, they're saying, you know, that's your given. How many sig figs are there? <laughs> One. So what would we report our number to? Uh, would it just be 4,000? Yeah, it would be 4,000. Okay. So I don't know. You might want to just ask your teacher when you're taking the test. Hey, do you want us to do sig figs or not? You know, because okay. that... Obviously, you don't want to have done all that work and then 
get marked down because of sig figs. So yeah, just check. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That was number one eleven. Okay, and then I think I wanted to go to one twenty six. Okay. Okay. So it says silvered. Hold on, silver sulfadiazine <laughs> burn treaty cream <laughs> creates a barrier against bacterial invasion and releases antimicrobial agents directly into the wound. Okay. 25 grams of AG2O is reacted with 50 grams of that other stuff. What mass of silver sulfadiazine can be produced assuming 100% yield? Okay, and it looks like they already balanced the equation for us, so that's cool. Let's just write it down. I don't really get, like, the whole 100% yield thing. Okay. We will go over it. Whoops. Just throwing in random letters now. A G C ten. <laughs> okay. Whew. Okay. So what they mean is okay, so let's talk about like if you were to bake some cookies. Okay, so if you were to bake some cookies and you went to Costco and you went and grabbed like a huge sack of flour, right? And you mm -hmm. bought some eggs and you bought some chocolate chips, of course, um, and some butter, some sugar, right? What else goes? Uh, a little bit of like, I don't know, other things. Anyway, so you're ready to make these cookies and then mm -hmm. you think to yourself, well, how many cookies can I really make, right? So even though we have this huge sack of flour, we can't make a bazillion cookies because we only bought, let's say, a dozen eggs, right? Or we only bought one bag of chocolate chips, or we only bought two sticks of butter, okay? So all these ingredients go into the fact that it doesn't matter how much flour we have, something else is going mm -hmm. to limit us and decide for us how many cookies we could make. So if we base it off of the flour, that means we could make, I don't know, gosh, that big sack of flour, that would be a lot of cookies. Let's say 200 cookies with that big sack of flour. But if we base it on our eggs, that means we could only make 50 cookies, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Assuming, so number one is, which ingredient is limiting us on how many cookies we can make? Is it the flour or is it the eggs? The eggs. Very good. So that's one thing, is like, what's really going to determine how many cookies we can make? And then number two is, this is assuming that we didn't accidentally crack an egg and have to throw it in the trash right? Or we okay. didn't accidentally like um, leave butter on our knife. So we didn't actually use all of the butter. We use some of the butter, right? So like in scientific mm -hmm. experiments, a lot of times um, we have an idea of how many cookies we think, we think we're going to get. And we end up with like one less, right? When you bake, you know, they call it a baker's dozen. Sometimes you get one more, right? You'll have 13 cookies yeah. instead of 12, 12 cookies. So you expect a dozen cookies, but then sometimes you've made 11. Sometimes you've made 13 because of the way you scooped it or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So in science, that happens a lot too, is like maybe some of the liquid got left on in the beaker or they accidentally spilled a little bit or whatever they measured something out incorrectly and so what they expected was not what they got and so a hundred percent yield would be my one dozen cookies that I expected the recipe to give me but if I got less than that then that's not a hundred percent yield because of the mistakes I made or something okay okay so when they're saying hundred percent yield they're saying Assuming the ingredients are used up fully, okay. how much of how many cookies do we actually get? 
right? But okay. we also have to consider, okay, how many cookies will we get from the flour versus how many cookies will we get from the eggs? And then tell them the lower amount, right? Because the lower amount is truly how many cookies you really get. Yeah. So for number 126, they gave us two different numbers. So it's kind of like we have to do these train tracks twice. And then whichever number is the smaller number is the real answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, because the other one's just the leftover sack of flour. That really doesn't mean we can make 200 cookies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's start with the first given piece of information, which is the 25 grams of ag 2 what should we do? Uh, turn it into moles. Okay. What units go on so bottom? Put, uh, gram and AG2O. What units go on top? Uh, Mall AG two O. What number goes on bottom? Uh, we have to add it up in the periodic table. Okay. What'd you get? Um, is it 231.74? Perfect. And what number goes on top? One. Good. And what should we do now? Cancel. Perfect. Now what? Uh... change it into the other moles by using like the balance equation. Perfect. What units so, go on bottom? Uh, mole of AG2O. And what units go on top? Um, mole of um, is it the C10 H. So that 25 grams, that's like, let's say our flour, and that 50 grams of C10 H10 and 4 SO2, that is like our butter or whatever. Or oh, eggs. so it'd be the, the AGC10 one? Right, that's our cookies, yep. So it would be okay. moles of, this is a lot, AGC10 H9 N4, SO2. <laughs> okay. What number do we put on bottom? Uh, oh, did I write that down wrong? Oh, there is a two there. Okay. Is it just one? Yep. And what number do we put on top? Uh, two. Perfect. Then what? Uh, cancel the unit. Great. Then what? Oh, wait, what did they ask for? Did they ask for mass? Yes, mass. Okay. So turn it back to grams. Mm -hmm. What units go on bottom? Uh, the moles of the AGC10. And four SO2. <laughs> and what <laughs> units go on on top? Uh, grams of AG. What number goes on bottom? 
Um, is it one? Mm-hmm. What number goes on top? Ooh, that one's uh, leave that I got three hundred and fifty-seven point one four two. I got that point. seems low for such a big number. Yeah, I got point oh eight, but it just could be our we're using different periodic tables, you know. Um, yeah. So then what? Uh, let me cancel the unit. Good. So I just scrap. Good. Then what? We multiply the top and then multiply the bottom. Good. What do you get on top? Uh, one seventeen thousand eight hundred and fifty-four. What do you get on bottom? Oh. I don't um, just. Yeah. 231 points. <laughs> yep. Then what do you do? Divide. Good. What do you get? Um, 77.04. Okay, and let's try sig figs here. So where should we stop? There. 77. Point, point zero. Yeah, point zero. And then what are your units? Grams of AGCL10. <laughs> I don't have even, even room to write it. <laughs> um, okay. So that's like if we were basing it off of our flour. Now we have to do it basing it off of our butter or whatever that other ingredient is. So they gave us 50 grams. And I better be careful about that 50.0 grams Whew, of C10H10N4. SO2. Okay, so you tell me, what should we do? Uh, turn it into moles. How? Put the grams on the bottom. Okay. And moles on top. Then what? Um, it's one mole, and then we have to add up the grams from the periodic table. Perfect. It's another long one. <laughs> Is it 250.28? Okay. Then what? Uh, cancel the unit. Good. Then what? Mm, multiply it by to convert it into the other 
No, so you put uh, the mole of the AG C10 on top, right? Okay. And then put the one mole C10 for 10 on the bottom. Okay, what numbers go in front? Uh, two on top. Okay. And two on bottom. Okay. Then what? Uh, then we have to turn it back to grams. Okay, let's cross this off first. Yep, and then turn it back to grams. What do we do? How? Um, you put oh, the one mole of AGC10 on the bottom. <laughs> okay, and what, what goes on top? The mass and grams of the... All right, and oh, I think we already did that though, right? Did we? Yeah, we already did that from the last one. So it it's the three hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. Then what? Uh, multiply the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. Cross the units off. Mm -hmm. And multiply. Uh, the top is 35,708. And the bottom? Uh, 500.42. Okay. Let me divide them. And I got seventy one point of what did Sing say? Would it just be zero then? So yeah. you got seventy one it says like seventy one point three five six, right? Is that what you got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna look let me actually We'll write this out. So you got 71, whoops, 71.3561 mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. So we have three sig figs. So we're going to look right here and then we're going to look there. So should it round up or down? So it would just be up to so 71.4. Yep. And then how about those units? Grams of AG, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. It's a different color. That is definitely not the same color I was using. There are three shades of blue there. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, grams of that stuff. Um, and... Now do we compare them both? Yeah, hold on. Uh, grams of all that stuff. A, G, C, T, H, <laughs> 9, N, 4, S, O, 2. Okay, so then we compare. So how many cookies can we really make? 71. 
Mm -hmm. So that's our real answer. So one thing to note is there are two different things here going on. We have something that is called the limiting reactant. And we have something that is in excess. In my cookie example, my flour was in excess because there's no way I would have used up the whole flour, right? Um, my limiting reactant in my example was like my butter or my um, chocolate chips or whatever limited, whatever really truly decided how many cookies I could make. So the limiting reactant is the thing that really truly decides, okay? So we started with those two numbers, which one is the one that decided how many cookies we could make? Uh, 71.4. Yes, but what was the starting point? What substance was it? Uh, the 50 grams of the C10. Mm -hmm. So our limiting reactant is that C10, H10, N4, SO2. That is the thing that decides how many cookies we really get to make. And, and based on that, we're going to have leftovers of the other ingredient. That's going to be our flour. So what is in excess? Uh, the... Uh, AG2O. Perfect. AG2O. Okay. So that might be asked of you, like, tell me what the limiting reactant is. Tell me what the, what's in excess. So that might be part of the question. So I just wanted to note that. And so the true amount, like you said, the true, true amount that we would box our answer would be that smaller number because of our ingredients.